Okay, Philippians chapter 3, and also, just for your information, um, after the service today, if anyone would like to take home a poinsettia, okay, I know we, we announced that last week, but the boss said don't do it until this week, so uh, we're going to, we can take home a poinsettia today, so you're going to go home with something, all right, amen. Philippians chapter 3, we're going to look at two verses, verses 13 and 14, all right, amen. It's good to be saved, it's good to be in church, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, the Apostle Paul writing to the church, he says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, goodbye 2021, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, hello 2022, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray, Father, again, it is good to be saved and it's good to be in church. Lord, we ask you to bless the message and let your words always be spoken, and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is a familiar passage. I usually preach this passage either at the end of the year or the beginning of the year, because you can preach it both ways. You can either preach about uh, looking behind, or you can preach about, you know, looking forward. And uh, I'm going to be preaching on the thought of looking forward. All right, now for 2021, for some of us, uh, it was a rough year. Uh, and for others, 2021 uh, might have been a good year. Uh, some of us uh, had some ups and downs, and uh, some of us, uh, you know, may have buried some loved ones, and uh, may have, may have uh, lost a job, or or this uh, pandemic and this economy, and uh, you know, 2021 was a repeat of 2020, and uh, you know, 2022 is a new year. Let's see, you know, what's going to happen. But let's be clear about something, church. Amen. If you belong to the Lord. If you're a born-again Christian, remember, you're his child. All right? Whether you had a good year or a bad year, or whatever happens in your life, remember, God either allowed it, God let it happen, or God made it. All right? Uh, this is also another thing. Yeah, yeah. Amen. There's no accidents with the child of God. There's no luck. There's no happenstance. All right? We ought to be saying, thank God. You know, praise God, we got through another year. We watched the ball drop, you know. We sang, oh, Lang Syme, and it's 2022. And, uh, hey, tomorrow's Monday, and uh, some of us got to go to work, you know. And it's going to, and it, we're going to be starting off a new year, and we ought to be thinking about the Lord, all right. Now, usually I start, you know, uh, in January about a little theme, you know, for the church. And last year's theme, if you remember, does anybody remember? Going through the wilderness, remember that? That was early in January. And this year I'm gonna be thinking, I'm still praying about it, but I'm thinking about preaching the book of Colossians and making the application to the church and to us in our lives. And I wanna preach a, you know, for the theme for 22 about the church, all right? The church has taken a hit, um, has, has taken a hit in the last year or two. Um, I read in the news that uh, some churches, they canceled their Christmas Eve, their Christmas service, their New Year's, the COVID thing. We're getting back into that again. Um, you guys know my policy. Uh, I don't want to close the doors. Uh, we closed the doors for three weeks back in March of 2020. I said, this is stupid. Peter says, we obey God rather than man. We opened up the doors and we've been chugging along. We may be few, but we pay the bills. We preach the gospel. Uh, you know, we help those in need. And we're brothers and sisters in the Lord, and everyone in this church, praise God, has got their, you know, hands in the plow and are, and are doing something. Whether they be singing or, or cooking food or cleaning the church or helping out, uh, we have a nice church. And we're going to be the New Testament church until the Lord returns. All right? And whatever you went through in 2021 and you're now going through in 2022, uh, maybe God is testing us and maybe God wants to make you stronger. All right? You know, sometimes, you know, in the way to, the, you know, pumping iron and getting strong, you got to go through some aches and pains. All right? Maybe that's what God's trying to tell you. All right? And there may be hard times ahead, but in the end, you know, when you'll come out of it, you'll be better. You'll be stronger, not just physically, but spiritually. My Bible says I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. All right? And it's not about us. It's about him. It's about his strength that he can give unto you if you have some faith. All right? God does test us, and God does uh, ch chastise us, and God does uh, get us in shape. Hebrews 12, 6 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son, every son whom he receiveth. All right? So don't look back on the negative things, but think positive. All right? 
And on, the, and on that thought, by a short introduction, I'd like to look at a, you know, and show you a few things that we should be, you know, looking forward to. All right, the first thing we, look, we need to look forward to is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ ought to be number one in our life. All right, you say, why? Again, the Lord Jesus Christ ought to be number one in your life. Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for uh, who for the joy was set before him endured the cross. And what we, do is, what we need to do is get our eyes off of self, and we need to look unto the author and finisher of our faith, the one that endured the cross. We need to look unto Jesus. All right? We need to get our eyes off our troubles and our problems and, and the things that we might be going through, and we need to look to the author and finisher of our, of our faith, the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ who died for your sins, who saved your souls. We need to get our eyes on him. You say, why? Well, 2020 and 2021 has been a big disappointment, but I'll tell you what, the Lord Jesus Christ, he will never disappoint you. All right? He'll never let you down. He'll never come up short for you. Unlike people in society that let you down. I'll tell you a funny story. When, uh, when me and my wife were in Ohio, my, my sons and his wife, the dishwasher broke, okay? Simple thing. Oh, my wife's giving me the don't talk, tell the dishwasher. I'm gonna tell the dishwasher story. And us New Yorkers, what do we do? We go to P.C. Richards, you pick the thing, and if, it, and if it's a Friday, he says, all right, I'll have it delivered and installed on Tuesday. And, you know, I'm not endorsing P.C. Richards, but that's, New Yorkers are like that, all right? We, like, we buy the thing, we want the thing done in the, the week. And we go to Lowe's. You know, Lowe's got the big 30% sale, and yeah, yeah, and all right, we want this one. And the guy says, I can have it for you Sunday, and this was uh, Friday. I was like, wow, that's great. And he goes, uh, but the delivery and installation is going to be six to eight weeks. So they can deliver to the store. <laughs> and I said, six to eight weeks? I said, I can, I can, I can go to China, but go get the thing, put it on the airplane, and bring it back, and you know, and uh, we'll be on six to eight weeks. And then we go to another store, uh, American Appliance, an independent thing. So maybe this is like the PC Richards of Ohio. And I said, hey, we like this one. The guy said, well, you can take it home, but uh, I said, what about installation? No, nah, the, the guy quit on us. I said, I said, I said what, 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 what's going on here? Dishwasher, I'm, you know, and you know us New Yorkers, we're like impatient people, I'm doing the old, what is going on with these like local yokels? I mean, you know, eight, eight weeks for a, a dishwasher. And then I said to my son, you know what, we're going to Home Depot because I'm a Home Depot guy. All right, all right, I got my Home Depot credit card, I do business with them. We go to Home Depot, Charles, an older guy with me, salesman, uh-huh, this is what you need, because what day do you want it? I said, whoa, 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 I've heard this through two times. I said, I know you have it, but can you deliver it and install it? He says, absolutely. So they pick the date, January 10th, next Monday, and that's it. All right? Now, in my society that lets us down and disappoints us, the Lord Jesus Christ says, you want something now? He's not going to tell you six to eight weeks. He's going to say, right away. The Bible says, casting all his cares upon him because he cares for you. Imagine if you prayed to Jesus and said, Lord, help me. And he says, eh, I'm busy. Eh, I'll put you on hold. Uh, I know what, get back to me in six to eight weeks. I'm a little busy, it's been a rough year, you know. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he always comes through in the end. Even when you have a broken heart, and even when those hardware store lets you down, and even when you're disappointed, the Lord Jesus Christ, he will never let you down. That's just humanity, you know. I mean, you know, it's not all, it's not all doom and gloom, but we often get let down. But the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to keep our eyes, we need to be looking unto him, and he will never let you down. Remember Peter? What did he do? He got out of the boat, started walking on the water. And as long as he was looking at the Lord and he had faith, he was walking on the water. And the second he turned and took his eyes off the Lord, what did he do? He started sinking. And what the first thing he said, was the shortest prayer in the Bible, Lord, save me. I mean, that's it. You know, if you're on the airplane and that thing's crashing, you don't got to confess all your sins and what you did. I mean, just, Lord, save me. <laughs> that's all you got to say. You say, that's a, that's a cheapy prayer. No, the apostle Peter prayed it. If he prayed it, you can pray it too. All right, don't be discouraged. Don't lose your hope. Keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
The Lord that saved your soul, the one that died for your sins, the one that, the one that promised you that he would give you a mansion in heaven and would give you eternal life. The one that straightened out your life once you accepted him as Lord and Savior. The one that might have saved your marriage or saved your kids or answered your prayers. And when it comes to the living God and you keep struggling and you, what you need to do, you need to, you need to keep your eyes focused on the living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? You need to keep your eyes on him. Titus 2.13 says, looking unto for that blessed hope and, our, and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, our Jesus Christ. All right? We need to keep our eyes focused and we need to be looking at the Lord Jesus Christ. Another thing we need to look forward to is to the fields because they are white and they are ready to harvest. All right, Jesus said in John 4, verse 35, Say ye not, there are four months, and then the harvest. All right, behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look into the fields, for they are white, ready for harvest. All right, this year, we need to be looking unto the fields of, of harvest. We need to be looking at, at people here in Long Island. Within 10 miles of this church, there's over 1.5 million people that live here between Queens and Long Island and Long Beach and Merrick and, and there's a lot of people out there. And what we and what's happened? A lot of them are not going to church. A lot of them are not Christian. A lot of them may have gone to church and have rejected Christ. And a lot of people are dying without Christ. And there's just a great big harvest out there. And we need to be busy. We need to carry a burden. We need to bring the gospel to the lost and dying world. We need to get to the gospel to our lost family members, your lost co-workers, to this community, to Long Island, to Queens. And we need to stop being content on just coming to church. And we need, we need to be busy about the Lord's work. All right? We need to be farmers. All right? The Lord said, put your hand to the plow and not looking back. You know why? Whatever happens when, if you're driving a plow and you look back, you're not going to drive straight. You're going to start, whoa, 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 whoa. You got to keep your eyes focused on the Lord. You got to keep your eyes focused on the Lord's work. All right? We need to pray to God in 2022. God, stir me up. God, stir this church up. Put me back where I used to be when I, had, when I first was on fire, when I first got saved. When I first got saved, I was telling my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, the mailman, the next door neighbor, my coworker, hey, you gotta read this Bible, hey, you gotta go to church. And they said, Henry's crazy, he got religion. No, Henry's, Henry's saved, he's going to heaven because he's got the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, amen. amen. Sometimes we forget about that. I don't believe me, I'm, I'm, listen, I, I have my ups and downs, but we need to get on fire for the Lord. Remember those days. And remember, there's people dying around us each and every day. You know, we lost, we lost one member in this church to the, to the COVID, all right? And many of us, you know, if we raised a hand, have probably known a friend or two that, that have died for COVID. And uh, we need to reach out to people. This thing could hit anybody, all right? You know why this country's in a mess? Well, I'm going to answer that next week. <laughs> because a lot of churches are, <laughs> are in a mess. All right? It's, it's not always about the bad politicians. It's about dead Christians and dead churches that don't care about if their neighbor dies and goes to hell. Dead Christians that are hiding in their house right now because they're afraid of COVID. Dead Christians that haven't been to church in years because they're afraid of something. Oh, but if you go to the diner, that diner's all packed. Oh, yeah, me and Mom, we went to the diner two weeks. We got a little freaked out. I mean, no one wear a mask. And, you know, all New York people, we go to the diner. <laughs> loud, loud, loud. And outside, boy, <laughs> the pancake. <laughs> and we're like, oh, my God, these people are breathing, they're coughing, they're sneezing. And yeah, they go to the diner. You go to Walmart. You go to Stop and Shop. You go to PJs. You go to Costco. And there's a million people. Some people went to the Christmas concert, the Christmas tree. But come on to church on Sunday. Oh, I'm going to go to church on Sunday. I'm going to catch COVID over there. Oh, yeah, this church can seat 300 people. We got, we could, don't worry, we could space it out. Uh, we'll put you up in, in Wayne's room if you really want to be isolated up in that little like AV room over. We got the room with the kids over there. We're, don't worry, we'll make sure everyone's six feet apart and we'll give you a mask and we'll give you a little wipey and we'll, we'll, we'll bring you to the car, we'll bring you back, we'll do everything. 
And people, I go to church. But you go on their Facebook page, you see there, they, they went to the diner. All right? This country's in a mess because a lot of churches are in a mess. Churches don't care anymore. They become passive. They become silent. Society has actually marginalized and silent churches, and the churches aren't fighting back. Churches aren't speaking up. All right? Churches are being afraid of, of being labeled a Bible thumper. They're afraid of offending someone. Oh, don't go to that Windsor Avenue Bible Church. The pastor teaches that if you don't accept Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. Oh, hell's such a bad place. Yeah, hell is a bad place. And they say, oh, a loving God can never send someone to hell. Jesus Christ spoke more of, of two things in the Bible. He spoke about hell and money. Can you believe that? Go ahead, go see, search all the words of read in Christ. He preached a lot about hell and a lot about money. All right, what happens? A lot of people are going to hell, and they can't take their money with them. All right? A lot of churches are not being uh, busy, are not being true farmers. We need to look at the harvest. We need to look at the opportunities that God gives us. We need to win the lost. People need help. Did you know that? Don't think like, oh, if I invite someone to church, they're going to get mad at me. Maybe they want to be invited. Maybe they see your life. Maybe they see that you're a nice Christian and an honest person. And they say, they wonder, well, I want to have what they have, but I don't know what they got. And when you invite them to church and they see the good of God, you know, and they say, hey, that's what I want to get a hold of. Help people. Invite people. Give them a Bible or a track. Have them look to Jesus. Did not Jesus go to the poor and sick and sinners? That was his mission. Jesus says, I did not come to save that those that are saved, I've come to save those that which are lost. That's the mission. We have to reach the lost. All right? Ask God to send you somebody that you can help or witness to in 2022. All right? You know what we also need to look forward to? We need to look forward to, we need to think about this once in a while, is that what awaits us in glory. All right? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 uh, verse 18 says, While we not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That seems like, sounds like a little confusing. What does that mean, Pastor? All right? we, look at the, we look at heavenly things, and we've never seen them before. All we see in our life is, 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 is what is in front of us, and these things are temporal. This wood, it may last 200 years, but eventually its temple is going to break down. All of us, our body, it's temple. We're all going to die. But the heavenly things, the eternal things, the things we never see, we ought, to be, we ought to be thinking about them. We ought to be seeing them. Now, how can you look at something that's not seen? All right? Well, one day you are going to see that because one day you will disappear, all right? And, we, and what you're doing is, is that we're looking through the spiritual eyeglasses. We're looking at things that we, that we can't see, but we have faith in and we believe. I've never seen Jesus Christ. I know I'm going to see him when I go to heaven. Job said, I'm going to see him for myself and not another. All right, John said, I am going to see that man, Jesus Christ, face to face. Can you believe that? I believe that. One day, you know, old brother Hank's going to kick the bucket and when the saints come marching in, I'm going to see the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to say, welcome to heaven. I'm, oh, thank God I made it. <laughs> Amen. And I get to see the Lord Jesus Christ, but I've never seen him now. I've never seen heaven, but I know that there's a heaven. And Jesus said he promised me a mansion and there's going to be a mansion for me. So we need to look at those, you know, whatever you want to call them, rewards, uh, and gifts, uh, the gift of God, eternal life. You know, we're, we've never seen them things, but we're going to see them. We need to look what awaits for us in glory. You know, remember, us Christians, we win. Okay, we're, we're on the winning side. The devil gets lost. Hell uh, and death get cast into the lake of fire and burns forever. And us Christians, we're up in glory. We're up in heaven. You know, sometimes we need a motivation in life. You know what? Thinking about eternal life, thinking of God, thinking of the Holy Spirit, thinking of Jesus, thinking of uh, angels, and thinking of our friends in our past life, that, you know, that, 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 that we're going to see them all. all right? and, and we're, hey, I can't wait. I want to talk. I got 
some questions. I want to meet Martin Luther. I want to meet the Apostle Paul. All right? I, I want to talk to people. All right? And we look at things that are not seen, but they're eternal. We've never seen these things, but they're there. They're eternal. And one day you're going to stand before the Lord. And one day you're going to the judgment seat of Christ. And one day you're going to stand before God, and you cannot lie. Second Corinthians 5, 10, 4, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things that are done in the body according to he that hath done, whether it be good or bad. All right? we, we, even Christians get judged. Our judgment is not based on eternal life, heaven, and hell. It's just based upon what we did as a Christian. Right? And then once you get some of that glory, you're going to be living on the streets of gold. And you're going to have a mansion. And you're going to be with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. All right? We need to get our mind off the temporal things. All right? I don't know if anybody saw my face post uh, yesterday, but you remember that movie Forrest Gump? Remember Lieutenant Dan? He lost his legs, you know, and in the, at the end of, towards the end of the movie, him and Gump got reunited, and they're in New York City on New Year's Eve, and he's got his long hair, and they're shooting the, 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 the corks, and the, they're drinking, I guess, champagne, and the little paper falls on Lieutenant Dan's head, and he looks all sad, and you know what? In his mind, he's thinking, well, it's a new year, but it's, it's still not gonna be good for me. And I say to you, hey, those, those are just temporal things. All right? Let 2022 be better than 2021, amen. And we can also, and we need to remind ourselves sometimes that, hey, amen, we're going to heaven. We're going to glory. We need to look at God and what awaits us in glory. We need to set our things on the eternal things of God. All right? It's nice to think about, you know, money and a car and food and this and that, but I'm thinking about eternal life. I'm thinking about heaven. All right? Your hope is in the things of God, eternal, not things here, temporal. Jesus said in John 14, 2, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. You know what the problem is with the church and a lot of Christians? They, they, they want their mansions now. What do we even call these houses here in Long Island? The big mansions. You know, you buy that old 1950s Levitt house and you bulldoze it down and you put up a mansion. They want their mansions now. They can't wait. They want their heaven here on earth. But God promises that heaven will come in the future. All right? Something else we need to look forward to in 2022 is that we need to look towards others. All right, Paul says here in Philippians 2, 4, the previous chapter, he says, Look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. Right? Now, what that simply means is that sometimes you've got to get your mind off of old self, all right? and you need to be concerned about other people. All right? Isn't that what Christianity is all about in the first place? God looked at others. He looked at Adam. He looked at Eve. He looked at me. He looked at you. Didn't you now look down on earth and saw the shape that the shape that man was in, right? Sinning and what he did. God looked upon man and he says, hey, I gotta do something about this. I have to send a sinless sacrifice to help them to have forgiveness of their sins. And Jesus Christ said, I'll go. Alright? Jesus said, I will be the sinless sacrifice. And let me tell you something, if others aren't involved in your life, or if you're not involved with others, you can be a, a very lonely, miserable person. And if all you are is consumed with self and the little box that you live in, then you're nothing more than a narcissist and a selfish person, and you will be a miserable person. One day you will be the loneliest person on earth. You'll have no one around you that loves you, no one around to care for you. Why? Because you did nothing for them. Do you think that they're going to you know, do something for you in return? All right? And I think one of the best human examples of someone who cares for others are, it rhymes, mothers. All right? Listen, me and my wife, we drove out to Ohio. We got there Monday. We left Saturday. Um, my wife, and I am, you know, she, she doesn't like me to tell the privacy, but my wife single-handedly watched our granddaughter every day every night, all right? Getting up at two o'clock in the morning, changing the diaper, holding her for three or four hours, giving her a bottle, heating up the bottle, washing the dishes, cooking. And what did I do? I, 
I slept. <laughs> I said, hey, babe, you got this, you know, mothers, you know, fathers, a little different. And I, I got a little R&R, &R, and she, boy, she gave it 110%. And, and I know my daughter-in-law is not going to watch the message, but every time she said, oh, you want me to hold the baby? She's like, okay. <laughs> because she, you know, she needed the help. And my wife thought about it. She thought of that grandbaby. All right? And that's an excellent example of someone. That, and she sang. And you know what? It takes me a little while to get my granddaughter to give her a smile. But when Sook walks around, the granddaughter goes, oh, hee, and she starts laughing for grandma. Oh, they got the bonding. Why? Because my wife, <coughs> grandma, invested the time and thought of others. All right? Once a woman starts having babies, it's not about her no more. It's about that child. Looking not every man unto his own thing, but every man also unto the things of others. You notice the things of others. Things, that's plural. All right, the things of other people, the things they're involved with, their jobs, their responsibilities, their needs. All right, uh, we need to be, you know, aware of the things of others. Other people need help. Other people need encouragement. Other people need prayer. Other people need the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And if you've got Jesus Christ in your life, then you need to share him with others. The Lord Jesus Christ, the one that saved your soul, that gave you a good marriage, that got you, uh, got the, got you off the bad habits, that gave you joy. Don't you want to share that joy with others? All right? And if you're going to have the right Christian life, you're going to have to build it with others, others in the church, others in the community, others in the family, other people you have contact with. Be a help to someone and be a blessing to others. All right, another thing we need to look at is that we need to look at, lastly, we need to look at ourselves, all right? John uh, says in 2 John 1, 8, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought but that we may receive a full reward, all right? What does that mean? That means that during the course of 2022, we need to check up and we need to look at ourselves uh, uh, all the time, all right? It's not just the January 1st, all right, I'm a Christian, I'm done for the year, and that's it, all right? Your body is, is like a car, all right? Your car needs an oil change, then you change the oil. You need tires, you gotta get a new set of tires. Your battery is low, you gotta get a new batteries. And our lives are like that, all right? In 2022, we need to keep a close eye on ourselves, all right? And you wanna know what the funny part is? Old self is a, it's sometimes hard to keep a, an eye on old self. You know why? We, well, we, we play games with ourselves. We got little devil, you know, self on the left side. And we got little angel self on the right side. And hey, I'm gonna, no one's gonna find out. The wife's not home. And, and the little devil, he, he, go for it. And little angel, don't do it. You're gonna get caught. And what happens? Us men, we always get caught. No matter what. I mean, I've, I've done my, I got, I'm running the back. I'm washing it. I'm cleaning it. Just never gonna find my girl. What's this? I don't know. What do you, what do, you do? Nothing. <laughs> Caught. <laughs> Caught. We got it. We're the, you know what the problem? You know what the problem is? Old self is the problem. We look at that mirror and say, I can, I can do it. And God says your sin will seek you out and it'll expose you. Old self will blame others when the truth is you're the problem. We need to check our priorities. We need to check our purity. We need to check our plans. We need to check our promises that we've made to the Lord. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-eight says, and we're going to transition this into our communion time, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. And may 2022 be a great year for us and for our church. And that's our message. Amen. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Wayne and Roman if you can come on up. We're going to we're going to give out communion for the first communion for 2022.